Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have reached towards the end of this lesson, it is time to look at some of the questions so that you can also understand whether you got this lesson well or not. So let us look at question number one. Compare the following central nervous system and the peripheral neural system. Resting potential and action potential, choroid and retina. So you basically need to compare them or you can distinguish them. So let us start with the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is composed of brain and spinal cord, whereas peripheral nervous system is made up of all the nerves which connects the central nervous system to different parts of the body. And what are those nerves? Cranial and spinal nerves. So central nervous system, they control and coordinate all the activities of the body because brain and spinal cord, they have the gray matter where the exact processing of the signals take place. Whereas the peripheral nervous system, their job, they only have the nerves and their job is just to carry the impulses from one place to another. So they transmit impulses from central nervous system to the sense organs or from sense organs to the central nervous system. Cent location wise, the central nervous system is located along the mid dorsal axis of the body. So if you see, if let us suppose if this is a human body, so the central nervous system that is the brain and the spinal cord. So this is the brain and the spinal cord, they are located along the mid dorsal axis. Whereas the PNS, the nerves arise from central nervous system. So the nerves arise somewhat like this. Next is the resting potential and action potential. This is pretty simple. Resting potential is that potential difference across the nerve fiber which exists when it is in the resting phase. That is, that is, it is not conducting any impulse. Whereas action potential is when it is conducting an impulse. That is why the potential is in action. The potential is moving. In this resting potential, the membrane is more permeable to potassium ions than sodium ions. Whereas when we talk about the action potential, it is just the opposite. In the, I mean, during the depolarized state, we see that the membrane becomes more permeable to, so to sodium ions. That is because the voltage gated special ion channels open up and there is a huge rapid influx of sodium ions. Resting potential refers to the polarized state of a nerve fiber. So when we talk about the resting phase, the, uh, the, the neuron actually is not doing anything. It is not conducting any impulse. So that time it is in the polarized state when the inside membrane, that is the inner of the membrane is negatively charged and the outer side of the membrane is positively charged. And that is when we say that it is in a polarized state. Whereas when we talk about action potential, it is in a depolarized state. Because now the polarity gets reversed. So we say it is in a depolarized state. And that action potential keeps moving from one region to the neighboring region. So let us look at the next one that is the choroid and retina. So choroid is the middle layer of the eye. Yes, right. And retina is the innermost layer. Now in choroid, blood vessels are present and that is why it provides nutrients to other parts of the plant. But in retina, it is the place where image is formed. So it consists of the photoreceptor cells, the bipolar and the ganglion cells and it helps us to see things. Both It provides both twilight vision which is provided by the rods and also color vision which is provided by the cones. Let us look at the next question. Answer briefly. How do you perceive the color of an object? Which part of our body helps us in maintaining the body balance? How does the eye regulate the amount of light that falls on the retina? So let us first look at the first question. How do you perceive the color of an object? Now the color is basically perceived by the photoreceptor cells which are present in the retina. Now what are the photoreceptor cells they, that are present? The photoreceptor cells are basically rods and cones. And what are the pigments which are present there? Now rods contain a pigment called rhodopsin which help in twilight vision. That is in dim light. And cones help in identifying colors. Now there are different types of cones which are good at uh, 
sensing the lights of different wavelengths the short cones which uh, is good at sensing the short wavelength light similarly medium cones and large wavelength sensitive cones so this is how they actually help to perceive color and this is why we are able to understand the color of different objects let us look at the next part which part of our body helps us in maintaining the body balance so vestibular apparatus does that so vestibular apparatus it is a part of the inner ear which is located just above the cochlea so you remember this portion is the vestibular apparatus so it is responsible for maintenance of body balance and posture there are nerves called vestibular nerve which connects to the brain and it sends information regarding the body balance to the brain so if you talk about the specific receptors of the vestibular apparatus so then they are crista and the macula so crista is the ridge which is present near the canals and macula is the ridge which is present near the uh, utricle and the saccule how does the eye regulate the amount of light that falls on the retina now this is very very important that neither too much of light should enter inside our eye nor too less light should enter and that is controlled by the tiny hole called pupil and how is the diameter of the pupil controlled by the muscular diaphragm called iris which surrounds the pupil so this is the opening of the pupil and it is controlled by the iris which is present like this which is muscular in nature so pupil controls the amount of light entering the eye so it is an aperture in front of the lens and its diameter is regulated by iris and iris being a muscular diaphragm it can cause contraction expansion and it can actually move so if you see if the iris is too if the muscles are too close by then this would be the diameter of the pupil if the muscles are quite far away from each other then this would be the diameter of the pupil so that is how it can control the diameter of the pupil and thereby regulate the amount of light that falls on the retina question number 3 differentiate between myelinated and non myelinated axons dendrites and axons rods and cones thalamus and hypothalamus cerebrum and cerebellum so let us start with myelinated and non myelinated axon the myelinated axon as the name suggests it has a myelin sheath present so the myelin sheath will be present or outside the axon so if this is the axon you have myelin sheath present like this and these myelin sheath are formed by the schwann cells the specialized cells which are present here so this is how the myelinated nerve fiber would look like whereas a non myelinated axon there will be no myelin sheath so it it will just be an axon like this that's all so through a myelinated axon fast conduction takes place the conduction is pretty fast here because the presence of the myelinated sheet provides additional insulation to the axon whereas in non myelinated the conduction is little slower in myelinated axon nodes of ranvier are present now these are the nodes of ranvier the gaps between the myelin sheath they are known as the nodes of ranvier but in non myelinated since myelin sheath itself is not present so obviously nodes of ranvier are also not present let us look at the difference between rods and cones now rods and cones both are the photoreceptor cells present in the retina now rods are those which are responsible for vision in dim light or less light and cones are those which are responsible for vision in bright light now why is that difference due to the presence of the different photopigments which are capable of absorbing or capable of sensing light in diff at different wavelengths so the uh, photopigment which is present in rod is rhodopsin and the photopigment in cones is iodopsin if you look at their structures rods are cylindrical in shape whereas cones are conical in shape and that is why the name cones dendrites and axons so dendrites are the extensions of the cell body on the anterior side so let us suppose if this is the cell body so dendrites are the extensions on the front side the anterior side whereas axon is an extension towards the posterior side so this is the axon
Dendrites are small but many per neuron. One neuron has many dendrites, can have many dendrites. They can also have one dendrite, but they are generally small in size. But axon is always one. You cannot have multiple axons, but it is very, very long. Dendrites are always non-myelinated. You cannot have myelin sheath around the dendrite, but for axons, you can have myelin sheath or you cannot have myelin sheath. So they can be myelinated or non-myelinated. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.